seasonal adjustment is perhaps the most in-depth um, adjustments you can make to a set of data, but it, the data must be seasonal. It mustn't just be cyclic, it must have a regular seasonal occurrence. So this is some seasonal data and we're going to run through. The book gives you a pretty clear indication of how to do it. Okay, the first thing you need to do is work out the average for the year. So I need to work out the average across the year 1991, and then across the year 1992, and across the year 1993, and fill out these. Now just to remind you to do it, I'm going to do 17 plus 21 plus 34 plus 9, and then I'm going to divide that by 4. Okay, so I'm going to fill out these three squares, and then I'll come back. OK, we're back. So I've worked out the average for each year. You can see it in this column here. Now we need to redraw our table and divide each value into its original data point. So what we do, I'm just going to redraw the, value, the table quickly, then I'll be back. OK, so I've got my table again. So what we need to do is we need to take this, this value here, this 17, and divide that by the average for that year. And that will give us 0.8. 395. Okay, so again you take the actual data point and you divide that by the average to get the seasonal index for that particular section. I'll go through and fill out the rest of this and then I'll come back. Okay, we're back. So what I've done is I've worked out, I've taken the original value divided by the average for each of these. Now I've used the year average. So each of these corresponds to what the average was for that year. So you can see that the average was 20.25 and a value here of 0.8395 means that in quarter one in 1991, this value is less than the average, a little bit less, okay? When we come across here to Q3, you can see that it's 1.6. That means it's well above the average, which you can clearly see from our data points here. So that's what all of that means. Now you need to work out the seasonal averages. So we need to come down the column. So the first step is to go across the years and work out the average. Now we work out the seasonal average. Okay, so the seasonal average for each of these quarters okay, is called the seasonal index okay, for that quarter. So there's my first one. I work that out by doing 0.8395 plus 0.7229 plus 0.8941 and dividing all of that by 3 because there are 3 values. So that gives you that value there. So I'm going to go through and work out the, the seasonal index for each of the remaining quarters and then I'll come back. Now the interesting thing about these seasonal indexes, I've calculated them all, but if I add all of them together, it should come out at four, because I have four seasons, I have four quarters. So I'm just going to confirm that, and you guys can confirm it on your calculator, but 0.8188 plus 0.9799 plus 1.6965 plus 0.5288 is 4.024. Okay, so I'm not that far off, so I've done pretty good. My rounding is perhaps a little bit off in some places, that might be why. So that is now our seasonal index for each and every one of those um, quarters, so for each season. So these are my seasonal indexes here that I'm circling now. Now from there, you now need to divide each term in the original series by that number. Okay, so we go back, we'll draw another table and I'll be back and I'll show you exactly what you need to do. Okay, so here we are with our table. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take our original value, which for this, this Q1 up here was 17, okay, and we're going to divide by the seasonal index. So we're going to divide that for the seasonal index for Q1, which is 0 0.8188, and this is going to deseasonalize. It's called deseasonalizing our data. So 17 divided by 0.8188 actually gives us a, season, a deseasonalized point of 20.76. Okay, so if I go through and did that for each of them, for this one here it was 15, for 92Q1 it was 15, so I'm going to divide that by 0.8188. Okay, 15 divided by 0.8188 and that gives us 18.31 three two if I round correctly. So I'm going to go through and fill out the rest of this table and then come back to you and explain what all of this means. Okay, we're back. So these are my deseasonalized data. Now if I graph that, what it's going to do is it's going to remove some of the seasonality. Okay. 
So if I give you a sample graph of what this data would have looked like, okay, and this is only a very rough sketch, so, but, so let's go, so in here is 91, in here is 92, and here is 93. Okay, so about two thirds of the way up it's going to go up, and then it's going to come right back down again. So it sort of does, for 91, it sort of goes up, up, big up and down, okay, right back down, okay, and then it's going to do the same thing, like that. So that's my seasonal data, that's my initial data, okay, that's this stuff here, okay, a very rough graph of it. Now if I graphed the new data alongside that, you'll see that it will actually be much less of a of a up and down, okay, so the data has been smoothed a bit, so it's de-seasonalised. And if you do that, you can see uh, you'll get a much greater idea of what what um, what trends there are actually in this seasonal data. Okay, so from there you can use that de-seasonalised data to fit a trend line, and then use that predict th to predict things. So there are a couple of things you need to know how to do. Okay, and one is if you have the seasonal index. Okay, you need to be able to go from that to the de-seasonalized value and also to be able to get back to the actual figure. So there are a couple of formulas you need. Okay, so with the seasonal index, if you have the de-seasonalized, de-seasonalized, if I could spell, okay, equals the actual, I really can't spell today, divided by the seasonal index, and I can't be bothered writing the whole thing out. Okay. To get the actual, okay, that is actually the de-seasonalized, de-seasonalized, it's a very hard word to write, divided by the seasonal index, okay? So they're the two formulas you need to know. If you have the seasonal index, you can work out the de-seasonalized by doing the actual divided by the seasonal, or you can work out the actual if you have the de-seasonalized divided by the seasonal index, okay? And these are things they will ask you to do. Now. When you are fitting a trend line to this, you must keep in mind that you are using a de-seasonalized data set and you may need to go back to your actual value using this value here. So when you predict using this equation, you'll actually get the de-seasonalized value here and then you might need to relate that back to the actual value. Now, another thing, another very important thing to remember is the total of seasonal index indices, because it's plural, equals the number of seasons. So in my example, I had four seasons. So the total, if I added up all of my seasonal indices, remember, if I add up these four numbers, okay, it had to come to four because I had four different seasons. Okay, so if you're working in something that has a different number of seasons, it will have that. But in general, in, in my experience, we work in four seasons, so the total of the seasonal indices should equal the number of seasons, which in most cases that you guys come across should be four. That's pretty much it for seasonal indexes and also chapter four. Um, good luck with it, and I'll catch you next time.